Good morning. Uh, I welcome you to this session. So we will be starting with the recapitulations of the phenomena of normal shock which we discussed earlier. Uh, let us see that we identified that the shock in that the upstream and downstream of the shock lies in the intersection of two lines, phenol lines and rally lines. You know this is the phenol line, this is the phenol line, phenol line and this is the rally line, this is the rally line, yes, this is the rally line. I like to repeat it again because here lies the concept. Other parts are algebraic manipulations which we have already done. Now the intersection of phenol and rally lines determine the two that is the upstream and downstream the two state points before and after the shock. As you know again the phenol line is the locus of state points having the same stagnation enthalpy that means the same stagnation enthalpy or stagnation temperature the energy remaining same. It is plotted in T-S plane so the same stagnation temperature at all points and the same mass flow rate. So, the only way of moving along the phenol line is by friction. That means with the same stagnation enthalpy and the same mass flow rate the phenol line can be, we can traverse along the phenol line with friction. And you see the, we can flow, we can follow the phenol line along the phenol line in such a way that the entropy should increase. This is because of the second law of thermodynamics for an adiabatic process entropy should increase. So therefore, the phenol line can be approached in this part either this way or in this part either this way. And we have also recognized that this part corresponds to Mach number greater than 1 that is a supersonic flow and this part corresponds to Mach number less than 1 sonic flow. This is purely a recapitulation and this is the sonic condition Mach number 1. So therefore, we have identified that for any flow where the total energy remains constant that means an adiabatic flow the effect of friction in the supersonic region is to change the flow from supersonic to sonic. Similarly, the effect of friction in an adiabatic flow in the subsonic range is to change the subsonic flow to the sonic flow. So, this is the phenol line characteristics. Similarly, another line which is we have drawn known as Rayleigh line, this line is the locus of state points where the impulse function remains same. That means impulse function remains same. That means no friction. That is in absence of friction we know the impulse function remains same. But the same impulse function and the same mass flow rate the locus of state points are known as Rayleigh line. So, Rayleigh line in general indicates the heat transfer. That means heat added or heat extracted from the system. So, therefore, one can follow the Rayleigh line in both the directions. That means we can go along this direction and we can also go or come along this direction. So this direction while we will go in this direction implies heating of the flow where the entropy is increased. While we can go along this direction of the curve which implies cooling that the entropy of the working fluid decreases. Similar to the phenol line this portion of the Rayleigh line curve represents the sonic flow, a subsonic flow that is Mach number less than 1 while this portion of the curve represents supersonic flow that is Mach number greater than 1. So therefore, one should know that in this case the heating that means increase in entropy means we can flow in this direction or we can go in this direction which means simply that a reversible heating in a supersonic flow changes the supersonic flow to the sonic condition. Similarly, a reversible cooling in supersonic flow changes the supersonic flow to more supersonic region. Reverse is true for subsonic flow that is a heating in subsonic flow in a reversible manner. Why I am telling reversible manner? This is in absence of friction otherwise the equality of impulse function which is a condition in drawing this line will not be maintained. That means the reversible heating in subsonic flow will change the flow to sonic condition while the reversible cooling in the subsonic region will make the flow towards more subsonic region. Now the Shock represents the intersection of these two points with the phenol line, the intersection of the phenol line and Rayleigh line. Why? Because we know that across the shock there is no energy addition. 
So, therefore, the two points should fall in the Fano line and should correspond to the same stagnation temperature. Similarly, the shock is so thin that we can neglect the effect of friction across the shock so that these two points should correspond to the same impulse function. So, that these two points must satisfy the Rayleigh line flow or the Rayleigh line condition. So, therefore, they are the intersection points in Rayleigh and Fano line. And from the second law of thermodynamics again, we have found that if the two points are the end points of a shock wave, then the shock wave upstream of shock wave should be this point because the downstream point should be such that it should increase the entropy since the two points corresponds to the condition of no heat addition. So, therefore, entropy should increase. So, therefore, from here we also see that shock always occurs in a supersonic flow and ends up to a subsonic flow with the subsequent increase in entropy. So, this has to be very much clear. So, therefore, we see another thing where from where we can incur that entropy change in the shock process is positive that if we go along the Rayleigh line to reach the point x and y not via a shock. This is the line through which we reach across the that is the shock process. This is a dotted line that is the through shock from x we reach y. But the x and y can be reached either via Rayleigh line or via Fano line. If we want to reach via Rayleigh line, first we will have to heat the supersonic flow and then we reach the sonic region, then we will have to cool the sonic flow and come to the subsonic region. And this heating and cooling will be such that the stagnation enthalpy or temperature will remain same. That means the amount of heat added in this process should be balanced by the amount of heat extracted in this process. And since you see the heat addition takes place at a lower temperature, while the heat extraction takes place at a higher temperature, the entropy of the system will increase while it will move from this point to this point along the Rayleigh line. You have understood? So, even along the Rayleigh line, if we follow, we can tell that the entropy of Y will be more than the entropy of X. Or even in the simple TS diagram, we see that the entropy has increased. So, therefore, it is very important concept. So, one should know that the shock takes place when the flow is supersonic and ultimately the flow becomes subsonic after the shock that is the Y. Now, last class we also discuss the relationship of the flow properties after the shock in terms of the flow properties before the shock. That means, with known values of upstream sections of the shock, how one can determine the downstream values. So, this is the Mach number at downstream of the shock as a function of the Mach number upstream of the shock. And from this equation, we can see that when m a x is greater than 1, m a y will be less than 1. That means, the after the shock flow will be subsonic. Similarly, we have deduced the ratio of pressure after the shock and before the shock in terms of the Mach number at the upstream of the shock. Well, and this can be found that when m a x is greater than 1, p y by p x is greater than 1. Similarly, we have found t y by t x as a function of the Mach number at the upstream of the shock that before the shock. Again by exploiting the equation of state, we can find out the density ratio that is the density after the shock to the density before the shock as a function of the Mach number before the shock. But now, I will tell you one important thing that if we use this equation of state, but do not replace p y by p x in terms of Mach number, but if we only replace t y by t x in terms of the Mach number upstream of shock, we arrive a relationship between density ratio and pressure ratio, which is very important. So, it is simply algebraic manipulations by which we get the density ratios after and before the shock in terms of the pressure ratios or equating the pressure ratio Finally, we can tell the pressure ratio in terms of the density ratio. That means, this is simply the manipulations of these equations. That means, here using the equation of state earlier, we derive rho y by rho x as a function of Mach number before the shock m x. But without doing that, if I only substitute this t y by t x to express rho y by rho x as a function of p y by p x, we get this one. Then from this, if we equate for p y by p x, we get a relationship which describes the ratio of pressure after and before the shock as the ratio of the corresponding densities that is after and before the shock. This relationship is very important 
and known as rankine hooknot relation now if an interesting thing you will see that if i we draw a variation for py by px with rho y by rho x for a diatomic gas if we take 1.4 for example air usually air is the working fluid under all practical circumstances so air behaves as a diatomic gases where the ratio of the specific heats is 1.4 now you see if you put this value this value becomes that gamma 1.4 this becomes 6 so therefore you see the inspection of this equation tells us that when rho y by rho x approaches 6 py by px becomes infinity that means if we start at 1 for example when rho y by rho x 1 py by px one. this is a trivial solution we already recognized earlier the two state points being same so the curve for py by px with rho y by rho x like this that means this is asymptotic to a density ratio of 6 let us do it in in a log log graph if you do like that you will see that it is better to show 10 then we can say 100 then we can 1000 or 10000 like that that means even if the pressure ratio tends to infinity for a diatomic gas the density ratio becomes 6 that means the downstream density can only approach to a value of 6 times the upstream density even if the downstream pressure is many many times more than the upstream pressure rho x this is a very important relation moreover you know that if you draw in the same graph the relationship between pressure and density for an isentropic flow that means here again i write p by rho to the power gamma is equal to constant that means if i draw on the same figure the relationship between p and rho for isentropic flow then the <coughs> equation will be like this this is the p by this is small p by rho to the power gamma is equal to constant so this is the equation from here one interesting fact is depicted that in the this range when the pressure ratio is very small for the shock the isentropic curve which is a straight line in a logarithmic plot log log plot it almost coincides with the shock curve this is known as normal shock curve normal shock curve or rankine hugniot curve rankine hugniot curve so the part of the normal shock curve or rankine hugniot curve in the very low range of pressure ratio almost coincides with the curve of isentropic process this leads to the conclusion that if the ratio of pressure is very small in a shock then the relationship between pressure and density can be found out from isentropic relations that means the process of shock can be considered as an isentropic one so from this the definition of a weak shock comes a weak shock a weak shock is defined to be a shock where the pressure change change of pressure is very small as compared to the initial pressure so to define whether the shock is weak or strong a parameter known as the strength of the shock p i define that as strength strength of the shock is defined strength of shock is defined as the <coughs> difference between the downstream and upstream <coughs> pressure that means sorry it is small better it is capital that means this is the increase in pressure divided <coughs> by the initial pressure so this is defined as the shock strength so when the strength of the shock is very small then the shock is known as weak shock so for a weak shock the isentropic flow relations for p and rho coincides with the normal shock curve now we see from this equation if we just manipulate from this equation py by px is 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 now if both sides i subtract one so this side it will be the strength of the shock because strength of the shock is py by px minus so therefore i can write from this equation by subtracting one from left hand and right hand side 
that p becomes equal to 2 gamma if you do it it will be coming like this a may x a square minus so an interesting feature comes out that when p is very small a may x a square minus 1 is also very small so the strength of the shock is very much related to the initial Mach number of the flow. Now, we define a shock as the shock of vanishing strength, shock of vanishing strength, shock of vanishing, shock of vanishing strength. Okay? shock of vanishing strength as the shock where p tends to 0. So, for shock of vanishing strength p tends to 0, m a x tends to 1. From which we conclude that shock of vanishing strength or infinite small strength the m a x tends to 1. That means, the Mach number tends to 1, the flow condition is sony, which concludes that a shock of vanishing strength propagates in a medium with the velocity of sound with respect to the medium. That means, the shock of vanishing strength occurs when the flow condition reaches the acoustic speed that is the sonic condition. Earlier we recognized that a small pressure pulse moves in a compressible medium with a velocity equal to the velocity of sound with respect to the medium at that condition. So, therefore, we can conclude that a small pressure pulse or a wave with small pressure disturbance is equivalent or a special case of a normal shock with vanishing strength. Because the normal shock of vanishing strength occurs when the flow condition is sonic. That means, other way we can tell a normal shock, a normal moving shock propagates in the medium through the medium with a velocity equal to the sonic velocity or the acoustic speed with respect to the medium. So, this is the thing about the weak shock. We can also find out the relationship between density ratio for a weak shock if we express rho y by rho x if we see that this equation when p y by p x is very small then we can infer that rho y by rho x also very small. That means the change in the density similarly the change in the temperature will also be very small. When for example, m a x equal to 1 here t y becomes exactly equal to t x. So, for a weak very very weak shock that is shock of infinite small strength T y will be almost equal to T x. Similarly, rho y will be almost equal to rho x and P y will be almost equal to P x and the sonic condition will be reached. All right? okay. And the similarly, the entropy change will be very small. If you look to the relationship for the entropy change, you will see the entropy change will be very very small. It will be almost 0. And that is the case where we have recognized that rankine hugniot curve, that is the curve for the normal shock and the isentropic relation P and rho coincides almost. That means, we can designate a normal shock of vanishing strength or infinite small strength as an isentropic process. Similar to that happens in case of a small pressure pulse or a small pressure wave in a compressible medium. Okay, I think that uh, this is the course for you in the compressible flow. Now, we will solve some simple and but interesting problems. Let us see that this problem. Okay? You see that what is this problem? You can take down, note down this problem. <coughs> Example 1. So, how we can utilize straight forward the formulae of compressible flow, the straight forward applications. Example 1. Air flows isentropically through a converging nozzle discharges to the atmosphere. So, a converging nozzle discharges to the atmosphere. At any section where the absolute pressure is 179 kilo Pascal, the temperature is given by 39 degree Celsius. Well, and the air velocity is 177 meter per second. Well, determine the pressure temperature and air velocity at nozzle throat. Okay. So, again I read the problem, air flows isentropically through a converging nozzle discharges to the atmosphere. At any section where the absolute pressure 
is 179 kilopascals, the temperature is given by 39 degrees Celsius at a particular section. Okay? And the air velocity is 177 meter per second at that section. Determine the pressure, temperature and air velocity at nozzle throat. It is a very simple problem and straightforward application. Let us find out that this is a problem, a converging nozzle is there. So, this is the discharge plane. Now, one thing is that it is discharging into atmosphere. That means, P B is P atmosphere. Now, we do not have to be biased either way. For example, when you see that, okay, the, has, uh, the problem has told determine the pressure at the throat, converging nozzle, throat means is discharge area. So, definitely pressure is not atmospheric pressure. It is a choking condition. Otherwise, the problem could not have been given. Do not be tempted like that. It may so happen that choking may not be there. In that case, the pressure at the discharge may be P atmosphere. So, first of all, we will have to check whether the pressure at the throat or the exit section atmosphere or not. How do you check that? Now, this nozzle may have a stagnation situation which can be simulated as a big reservoir that this convergent nozzle may be related to a or may be connected to a big reservoir. That means, with respect to the flow through this nozzle, this is an isentropic flow, there is a stagnation situation. Well, there is a stagnation situation. So, corresponding to the stagnation situation, the properties are P0, T0, Rho0, we know all those things. Now, here we have been told that at any section, at an arbitrary section, the pressure, let this section is 1, let this section is through T. So, section 1, we have been given P1 is 179 kilo Pascal. <coughs> T1 is given 273.515 plus 39, that Kelvin. And V1 is given 177 meter per second. Okay. So, now we know that at any section, the flow properties are related to the stagnation properties like this, P0 by P1 is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2, the local Mach number whole square, m square rather, to the power gamma by gamma minus. Simply, we should start from T0, T0 by T1, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2. <coughs> so, from here, using these equations, now we can find out the stagnation pressure. How we can find out? We know V we know T1. So, we can find out MA1. How? Because A at the section A1 is root over gamma R T1. With this T1, we can find out A1. Okay. Now, before that, we can check for this condition P0 by P1. That I will do afterwards. Now, let us consider this a 1 is root over gamma r t 1. So, we can find out p 0. So, the value of p 0 comes out to be and also the value of t 0. Okay? The Mach number comes out to be, I am telling you this A comes out to be, the problem answer is that 354 meter per second, if you substitute this. And with this A, if you calculate, if you Calculate the Mach number, the Mach number will be, well, the Mach number will come out to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, yes, Mach number will be straight away 0 0.5. If you put this Mach number and solve this with the value of gamma taken as 1.4, whenever the working fluid will be air, we can take the value of gamma considering the air as a diatomic gas 1.4. So, you get the value of P0, it is very simple problem. P0 is 212, you can check it if you perform this calculation and T0, well, P0, T0 of course, you can calculate, it is not given here. So, T0 also you can calculate by substituting the Mach number 0.5 here with the gamma 1.4, P0 comes out to be this. Once the P0 is coming out, we can check whether the nozzle is choked or not. That means, we can find out the corresponding pressure at the throat if it is choked. Now, at the condition of the choke, that Ma is equal to 1. So, let us find out what is the critical pressure, P0 by P star. That means that if we put Ma is equal to 1, this will be 
gamma plus 1 by 2 whole to the power gamma by gamma minus 1, which means that we can write this thing p star is equal to p 0 2 by gamma plus 1 by gamma by gamma minus 1. And this quantity with k gamma is equal to 1.4 is 0 0.528. This quantity is 0 0.528 of P0 with gamma is 1.4. So, if you perform the calculations, we will see that P star is more than that. That means, P is 0 0.528, now P0. So, therefore, we see that P0, if you consider P0 is the atmospheric pressure. So, therefore, we see that P star is 0. No, sorry, P0 we have found out already. One, what is P0? 202. What is the value? Uh, 212. So, what is the value of P star? 111.93. So, therefore, automatically this is more than the atmospheric pressure. P atmospheric is 101 kilo Pascal. So, therefore, nozzle is choked. So, that means the condition at the downstream will correspond to the choking condition. So, therefore, P star will be the P exit. So, if I denote the throat as T, here you have denoted T, so P exit or the P throat. So, throat condition means the exit condition will be P star. Here the nozzle is choked, the nozzle is choked. Now, when the nozzle is choked, straight forward I can write T 0 by T star is, what is that? 2 by gamma plus 1. That means, Substituting the value of T0, we can find out the value of T star. And the value of V at this, that means T throat is equal to T star. So, value of the throat is equal to V star, which is, is equal to A star, which is, is equal to gamma R T star. So, this value becomes equal to, well, 111.936, this is 112 kilo Pascals. So, only this problem refers to the pressure at the throat, but you can find out what is the value, have you calculated? So, you can calculate from it the value of the velocity at the throat. So, it will be simply gamma r t star. What is the value of t star? What is the value of t star? 2 by gamma plus 1. Oh, sorry, it is sorry, it is other way, gamma plus 1 by 2. When you make t star, it will be T 0 into 2 by gamma plus 1. I am sorry, it will be gamma plus 1. Have you calculated this? Okay, if you calculate, then you will get the value. So, T star n. So, therefore, in this case, the most important part is that you have to first check whether the nozzle is choked or not. That means, we will have to find out the stagnation conditions, stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, stagnation density. That means, usually the back pressure is given. Whether the back pressure is lower or more as a high, lower or greater than the critical pressure, that is P star corresponding to the stagnation pressure. That means, we can use this formula. So, if we see the back pressure is lower than the critical pressure, that means, the nozzle will be unable to expand up to the back pressure, it will choke. That means, the finally, it will expand up to the critical condition, critical pressure. But if we see this critical pressure is lower than the back pressure, then the nozzle will be able to expand up to the back pressure. That means, it is simply expansion up to the back pressure, Con continuous expansion up to the back pressure will be the pressure at the throat. Okay? Now, next problem, you please write another problem. Air flows, another simple problem, steadily, you write this problem, air flows steadily and isentropically in a converging diverging nozzle. At the throat, the air is at 140 kilo Pascals, the throat condition is given, absolute, that means this is the pressure in absolute and at 60 degrees Celsius. Well, 
at the throat, the air flows steadily and isentropically in a converging diverging noise. This is a converging diverging noise. At the throat, the air is at 140 kilopascals and at 60 degrees Celsius. The throat cross sectional area is 0 0.05 meter square. At a certain section in the diverging part, in the diverging part, at a certain section in the diverging part of the nozzle, of the nozzle, of the nozzle, well, the pressure is 70, the pressure is 70 kilopascals, absolute, all pressures are in absolute. Calculate the velocity, simple problem, calculate the velocity calculate the velocity and area of this section and area of this section. Now, I repeat this problem again. Air flows steadily and isentropically, a steady and isentropic flow in a converging diverging nozzle. Here, the nozzle is a converging diverging. At the throat, air is at 140 kilopascals absolute and 60 degrees Celsius. The throat cross sectional area is 0 0.05 meter square. At a certain section in the diverging part of the nozzle, the pressure is 70 kilopascals absolute. Calculate the velocity and area of this section. Now, the tips for this type of problem is like this. When you have a converging diverging nozzle, now you may have two situations flow in this direction. One is the venturi, another is a nozzle, though it is told a converging diverging nozzle, rather I should converging diverging duct, I will make it, flows through a converging, because the nozzle word may confuse you. So, if I tell a converging diverging duct, so then you can take it both as a nozzle or a diffuser. So, what is the check? Now, let us consider this is a throat and some section in the divergent portion is 1. Now, throat conditions are given P t is equal to 140 kilopascals. So, T t is equal to 60 degree Celsius, that means 273.15 plus 60, that means 330.15 Kelvin. And area is given, A t is 0 0.05 meter square. Now, since P 1 is given as 70 kilopascals, so is it a venturi flow or a nozzle flow, convergent divergent nozzle? Huh? Nozzle flow, yes, that first you will have to understand because in the divergent part the pressure is decreased. That means until and unless the flow is supersonic, an increase in area cannot decrease the pressure, which means that this part the Mach number is greater than 1. That means it is a convergent divergent nozzle, which means that this part the Mach number less than 1 and nozzle is the condition where Mach number is 1. So, therefore, we are identify this as a convergent divergent duct since there is an expansion or a decrease in pressure in the divergent part of the duct. This is the only tips or the crack of the problem. So, therefore, we can find out the respective P0, T0, we can find out the respective P0, respective T0. What is T0? T0 is equal to T0 if you T0 by TT, TT is the T star. T t is the T star, that is T 0 by T star is gamma plus 1 by 2. Similarly, P 0 is P t into gamma plus 1 by 2 to the power. So, taking the value of gamma is equal to 1.4 and P star P t T t is the P star T star because P t is P star because throat corresponds to the sonic condition for a convergent divergent nozzle. So, therefore, if we know the T t and P t, we can find out the corresponding stagnation properties for that flow, that is P 0 and T 0. So, this P 0 and T 0 values comes like this, P 0 is, if you calculate, P 0 comes out to be 265 <coughs> kilopascals and T 0 comes out to be 
400 k. Well, now what you will find out? Now, since you find out the, we have to find out what? Calculate the velocity and area of this section. Now, to have to find out the velocity at that section, first of all, we will have to find out the Mach number at this section. If we know the Mach number at this section and other properties like P1, T1, we can calculate the velocity. So, to calculate the velocity, we will have to know Mach number, that means MA1. How to know the Mach number? We know P0, we know P1. So, therefore, we relate this P0 by P1, this we use this equation. So, only you will have to see the which equations we will be using, MA1, so gamma by, sorry, gamma by gamma minus. That means we know this value, P0 is 265, P0 is 265 and P1 is given in the problem as 70 and this Mach number is found out and we see that this Mach number corresponds to a value which is more than 1 obviously and it is 1.52. This is by calculations. All of you understand? We find out Mach number. When we find out the Mach number, what we can find out, first of all we can find out the T, well we can find out similarly the T, T0 by T1. Now when we know the Mach number, we can find out, so we first find out the Mach number by equating this P0 by P1. We are given value of, given the value of P1, not the value of T1. So once we find out Mach number, so put this Mach number and get the value of T1, the temperature at that section which comes to be. 274k. Now, everything is known. If I know T1, I know A1 as root over gamma R T1. So, the value of A at that section becomes, well, the value of A is not worked out in this problem. So, A becomes root over gamma R T1 and we can find out V1 as Mach number that is 1.52 times the A1 and that value becomes equal to 504 meter per second. Now, to find the area of cross section, velocity and area of cross section. Now, area of cross section here to be found out by equating the mass flow rate under steady condition. So, if I write the continuity equation that is the mass flow rate at steady condition at throat and at this section, then we can write that m dot is equal to density at the throat into area at the throat into the velocity is equal to density rho 1 v1 a1. So, what has to be found out a1? So, see that whether everything is known, rho throat is rho star that we can find out, a throat is a star and v throat is v star. So, a star is given in the problem 0 0.05 meter square, v star is what? v star is same a star is root over gamma r t star. So, we know this thing. So, v star we know. So, A star is given in the problem and rho star we can find out similarly from this type of relationship that means I write it that is rho 0 by rho star is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into 1 by gamma minus 1. Huh? Oh, you cannot see. Okay. Okay? Rho 0 by rho star. That means we can find out the rho star. Alright? That means the quantities that is density, area and velocity required in determining the mass flow rate at the throat we can find out. The same mass flow rate if we equate with the quantities at the desired section at the steady state rho 1, v1, e1. So, v1 we know. Rho 1 we can find out by using the same equation, same type of equation which connects rho 0 by rho 1 with the Mach number that means it, sh it, it will be this raised to the power 1 by gamma minus 1, rho 0 by rho 1. That means rho 0 by rho 1 for any local property will be gamma minus 1. That means once we know the Mach number at any section, we know the relationship of the flow properties like density, temperature and pressure with the stagnation properties through this relationship for isentropic flow. So, we know rho 1. V1 is already known, so we can find out A1, the cross-sectional area. Well, so this cross-sectional area after calculation comes to be, well, 
the cross sectional area after calculation comes to be 0 0.A1 comes to be here I write A1 can you see yes comes to be 0 point you can check your calculation 96 meter square. So, these two equation two problems sorry two problems highlight the basic understanding of the compressible flow and the straightforward application of the formulae. So, what happens is that when this relates to a problem of convergent nozzle, relates to a problem of convergent nozzle, you first try to find out the stagnation conditions from the conditions given. If stagnation conditions are straightforward given, that is all right. Otherwise, you find the stagnation properties and check whether the back pressure, which is usually given for a problem, is lower or greater than this critical pressure. That means, you find out the critical pressure that is when the sonic condition is reached compare that with the back pressure and determine whether the nozzle is choked or not and accordingly solve the problem. Similarly, when the problem will be posed tactfully through a convergent divergent duct, do not hurriedly consider this duct as a nozzle or continuously a diffuser. So, it will act continuously a nozzle or diffuser when one part is subsonic other part is supersonic. That means, the supersonic flow will be diffused in this part and again a sonic a subsonic flow will be diffused. This will be acting as a continuous diffuser or a continuous nozzle. So, in that case the conditions will be accordingly given, but it can act as a venture emitter. So, that you first decide that whether it is a nozzle or a diffuser or a nozzle and diffuser mix that means throughout the flow is subsonic. Okay, and accordingly you find, for example, if it acts as a nozzle continuously, that means this is the sonic condition. This part is subsonic, this part is supersonic. If you find that this is acting as a continuous diffuser, then also this is a sonic. In that case, it is supersonic and it is subsonic. So, you first decide that, okay, from the data given and accordingly you solve the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.